Hello, hello. I... Ha! I'm recording the fourth video for the day. It is 3.30am. Strangely productive tonight. How's everyone doing? Anyway, I shall start. And uh... Let's make this a bit fun. Because it's the last circuit video. You have come very far. This circuit... I kind of like put together all the weird weird circuits together and I think I'm just going to do a rating lah. I will rate the circuits later for you, okay? Hmm, so I will rate it. See lah, I'll come up with some random rating. So it's a, it's a nice chill video where we listen to some Studio Ghibli music where I talk to you about some other circuit connections and we can rate the circuits. You can choose your favourite one. Anyway, um, I classify bridge circuits as any form of circuit where you have a connection of resistors, okay? And uh, this kind of bridge circuit, right, um, the way it works is that we will still adjust or have a variable resistor. So it can be one variable resistor, it can be two, it can be all. Freestyle, guys, freestyle. Freestyle time. It's like you spend so much building your EXP, of circuits now it's time to go all out all right anyway um here you have you can see that whoops there's a network of uh, resistors four of them r1 r2 r3 and r4 and uh, what will happen is that we will adjust until the galvanometer reading is zero okay so let's say uh, r3 is the variable resistor Okay, and like this in this case, if let's say you want to follow the same circuit, so they are kind of like the same connection. And what I mean by that is, if let's say you struggle with understanding what I mean by oh, the circuit is the same connection, well, my friend, you can just um follow the current. Current will come out from the battery, okay? Current come out from the battery, reach point A as a junction. So this point is point A. Make sense? I think maybe I need to make this diagram bigger. Ding 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 ding. Oh, cannot because I deleted all the values. Okay, never mind. Forget that. Um, where were we? Alright. So once you reach point A, right, the current be like, oh guys, guys, we got two choice. We either go to R1. Ding 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 ding. Or we could go and then we have to go to R3. So maybe this can be your R1. Well, frankly, it doesn't matter whether it's the top or the bottom one. Okay? So this will be R1. And then ding, 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 ding. This is R3. And then you go back. Life is good, guys. Life is good. See? Um, the second option would be to go to R2. Reach point C. So R2 would be here. And then go through R4, uh, like that. And then go back out. Ta-da! Okay? Um, and this will be your meter line in the middle. So you might be thinking, right? Actually, you're amazed, oh. Uh, wouldn't any current flow through the governometer? Well, my good friends, you know what we'll do? We will adjust the meter until... I'm uh, sorry, we will adjust the resistor until you get a zero reading. Okay? We will adjust the resistor until you get a zero meeting. Now, I'm... Spoiler alert! There's a circuit that looks something like this somewhere in your near future. La. I don't want to tell you when, but somewhere, la, somewhere, somehow. Don't know when. Okay? So, um, then you will observe. La. I won't even tell you when you are having the experiment. I'll see whether you can notice or not. Bonus point if you can. Let me know. Alright, so from here, you can see that these two circuits are, are the same thing. Uh, it's just that they are drawn differently. So if you trace the direction of the current, you should be able to tell whether the circuit are the same or different. It's the same circuit. Alright, guys? So um, the, fun the working principle here is, number one, we are going to adjust the variable resistor, R3. So R3 here, in this case, it looks like a thermistor. Uh, you can see the... The shape is a thermistor, or in this case, it's a variable resistor. Okay, fine. Maybe I'll change it to a thermistor. And then, then the thermistor looks like a spoon, you know. Like that. Yeah. Okay, so let's start. Number one. 
okay so the thermistor thermistor can be a variable resistor can be anything like huh so a thermistor r3 uh, is heated gradually until the galvanometer reading is zero so if the galvanometer reading is zero um what this tells you is that the potential at B will be equal to the potential at C. So that will be a case of you shall not pass. Okay? Cannot, cannot pass. Alright? So it's another case of you shall not pass. And if you shall not pass, it means that the potential difference across AB, I'm going to label this, okay? So it means that the potential difference across AB here to here will be the same as the potential difference across AC, here to here. Can? So this is VAB, this is VAC. They must be the same, okay? So VAB will be equal to VAC. Alright? And, at the same time, the potential difference across BD, I'm just going to use red for this one, VBD, here to here, will be equivalent to VCD. Now, to just drive home this point to you after I write this down, I'm going to draw this beautiful thing that you learn in maths called the number line. Know what is number line or not? Okay, never mind. So I'm going to draw a number line here just to represent the circuit for you. Lah. And because you like to think in boxes, I would like to think that this would be a bit more straightforward if it's drawn this way. Okay, so you have two resistors here. So instead of drawing the resistor, I'm just going to draw the points. So this will be point B, this will be point C. These two are actually the same point, you know, this is point A. It's just it's the same wire guys it's the same thing so this also will both be point d so here's my question if you want b if imagine a number line okay imagine this is connected to 10 volts okay just to make your life easier this one is connected to 10 volts which means or oh, whatever it is in this number line this one must be 10 it's a weird and decreasing number line but live with it okay and this one should be zero Okay, if you want B and C to be the same, I don't know what B and C is, uh, whatever B and C is, but you want B and C to be the same. So that means uh, if here to here is 7, then here to here will be 3. But if you want B and C to be the same, which in this case, uh, 10 minus 7 means this point here is 3 volt already. Okay, then here to here must also be 7. Make sense? If not, they cannot be the same. Alright? So, uh, yeah, it's like building two slides. If you want the height of the slide to be the same in the middle, and given that the height of the slide before and after is the same, then at any point in time, the slide will have the same height. Okay? But, um, we shall continue with these two equations. Now, I know you know V equal to IR, because huh? I nagged you so many times already, okay? So, let's look, let's assume that the current through the branch AB Okay, the current, this green current, uh, I will call it I1. Thin, tiny I1 there. Can you see? Is it too small, guys? Is it too small? Okay, uh, much better. But then I have no space to write. Such a dilemma. Okay, anyway, this will be I1. And uh, this down here will be I2. Okay, so I'm just going to plug this in before I zoom out and derive equation. So here, you will say that I1, because the potential difference across AB, I1, R1, will be equal to the potential difference across AC, I2, R2. Okay, life is good. Moving on. Dun, dun, dun. Okay, potential difference across BD would be, so it's the same current I1. Remember, because the current will not pass through the galvanometer. You will heat up the thermistor until the galvanometer reading reads zero. So this will be I1, BD would be R3, the thermistor, and CD would be uh, I2, 
R4. Okay, how would you simplify this equation, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls? Divide law. You see the I1, I2 is screaming to be divided so that they can cancel out. So if I divide them, I will get I1, R1 over I1, R3 will be equal to I2, R2 over I2, R4. Can cut, 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 cut the all the things. The derivation can be asked. The equation does not need to be memorized. I honestly don't think you will take a long time to derive it if you understand the idea behind it. Okay? So the main idea here is, number one, a, ver a certain form of variable resistor will be heated, heated or changed until your galvanometer reading is zero. Once your galvanometer reading is zero, what happens here is that... Wait, let me adjust. What happens here is your potential across AB will be, the, will be the same as the potential across AC. Here the potential and here the potential is the same potential. Okay, and then BD will be the same as the potential across CD. So if you equate the potential and then you apply V equal to IR, your multi-purpose equation in this topic, and then you just simplify the equation. Alright, by dividing them. Okay, let's try some question and let's rate the circuits, guys. Let's rate the circuit. Oh boy, this one's so cute. Okay, so this one is a terminal box connected to a battery. They are not all potential meter. La. Oh, I mean, sorry. Wheat. Actually, by the way, uh, this thing is called a Wheatstone Bridge. Alright, it's, it's a particular name. La. But the name, they never mention your syllabus. So, okay. Lo. So, this uh, this circuit uh, looks very easy. Uh. I rate this a 2 out of 5 in difficulty. Maybe a one and a half out of five. Okay, so you have a four terminal box connected to the battery with two emitters. Current in the two meters are identical. So this is the important point, huh? The current is the same. So this is this is generally what I mean by wildcard circuit. Like you kinda of don't know what you're gonna get. Which circuit within the box will give you the result where the emitter reading is the same. So my suggestion is you draw the circuit inside and see how. Okay, so the first one looks very suspicious. And suspicious because um, this loop is disconnected. You see here it's not connected, right? So in this case, uh, this the first emitter, let's say I call this emitter 1 and emitter 2, lah, just for the sake of discussion. Emitter 1 will have a reading emitter 2 no reading okay moving on the second one has a circuit looks like this uh, nick, nick, nick. Are you? in this case oh, do you know how the current will flow the current is going to flow like this let's leave the positive terminal pass through emitter 1 a I either go down this resistor, which I can do, but got work, you know, I don't wanna, or I could go straight, go through the second emitter, and then just bypass the resistor because ain't nobody got time when there's an alternative where I don't need to go through a resistance. Ideal emitter have zero resistance, huh? That's what this is what I meant. I mean, grammar, grammar. Okay, so in this case, right, uh. I can say emitter 1 is equal to emitter 2, but I also kind of want to check the other connections too, uh, which I will do so now. Ding, 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 ding. Okay, so let's consider option C. So option C, you have a resistor here. Okay, and it seems fine until you notice that this number 1 becomes a branch. B-R-A-N-C-H. So this one will reach this point and then it will split into two. One will go here, one will go here. Okay, so let's say the current here is I1. will split into two. Uh, one goes here, one goes here. So emitter two 
is only measuring a part of the current that enter the branch one Kirchhoff law. So in this case, right, the reading for the first emitter is less than the second emitter. You know, wait, first emitter is greater than the second emitter. Okay, because the first emitter gets all the current, and then the current is then split into two branches. The second emitter only get the current from one of those branches. Nah. So we only get this current. The current that passed through the resistor didn't measure. Okay? This down here, the resistor down here. In this option, no current will not choose the resistor down here because there's another option where it's free. In this case, there's no free option. Both options also got resistor. So both branches also will have current. Okay? Alright, moving on. My dear. Okay, lo. So if now you have, you connect this way. Connect this way. Uh, your current will flow like this. Is it correct? Yeah. It's just the same loop. Right? Right? Am I wrong? Oh no. The current will flow like this. It's the same loop. This one, one is also equal to two. So which is better? Is B better or is D better? Well, actually, I put a fast one on you. La. If you consider the connection for uh, B, right? Where the resistor is like this, and this one is like this, and this one is like this. Remember I told you the current will always choose the right, right, the part of zero resistance if that option is available. So actually, yeah, <laughs> the current will flow here. Were you trick? Did I did I did a good job? Current does not flow here at all. It will just go through the emitter and then come back, just come down. I yo. So in this case, oh, one is not equal to two. One got reading. Two no reading. Okay. So the answer will be D. At this point, if you have been watching my videos, I will drop a hint to you lah. If I set this question, I'm gonna keep everything. And then I will just say, it is found that the current in emitter 1 is greater than emitter 2. Which of the options gives you this outcome? This is what I do lah. This is what I always do. Okay? Okay, moving on. So this one is a 2 out of 5. Mm, okay lah, but can do lah. 5 out of 5 will recommend you do. Alright, so this is a circuit. Oh, good lord. Look at all the resistors. Nah. Okay, what would be the reading of the voltmeter? Someone they connect the voltmeter in such a weird way. Yeah, guys, don't panic. This is a potential divider question. It's a 3 out of 5 question. Not hard. Very easy. Okay, so let's check branch by branch. Alright, so let's take this branch. Branch A to branch B. Now, branch... You know, the more I talk about brunch, the more I think about food. Brunch. Okay, never mind. Sorry, side tangent. Alright, anyway, you have two identical resistors in series. So, this is 1.5 volt. They share share law. Huh? Equal share. 1.5 volt. Okay. This means uh, the potential here is 3 volt. Drop 1.5 volt, become 1.5 volt. Drop another 1.5 volt, become 0 volt. This is what it means by having a potential difference of the battery set up to 3 volt. That means between A B is always a difference of 3. So if you take 3 and 0, that means 3, drop 1.5, become 1.5, drop another 1.5, become 0. Okay? Oh boy, let's look at this branch. Mm. Actually, uh, this whole branch, uh, I don't care what resistor they draw. I just need to find the effective resistance. And then since this one is all 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1. So I'm just going to simplify the branch. Let's say this is the branch CD. Okay. So I'm going to re renovate CD or do a KonMari method. Does this spark joy? And simplify the circuit. Simplify my life. Hmm. Okay. So let's uh, look at this. 1, 1, 1. 1 over 1 plus 1 over 1 inverted is half. Okay, la, come la, I do slowly. La. I don't know 
I don't know um, C, D Let's call this M I call this M la. I call this N la. Okay So from C to N You have uh, The resistance oh, From C to N Would be 1 plus 1 So 1 over 1 plus 1 over 1 Inverted Plus the other 1 in series So this one is 0 0.5 Okay, so you get 1.5 ohm Okay What about the resistance between N and D? Um, 1, 1, 1 In series 1, 1, 1 In series so if it's 1, 1, 1 in series, le, 3, lo, so 1 over 3 plus 1 over 1, whole thing inverted. Um, this would be 3 over 3. So let's double check. So if I didn't tell you yet, the reason why I write this way is because I am that blur case student who forgot to invert the answer and then the whole thing wrong and then I get very annoyed like why why like this way so more 3 over 4 3 over 4 or 0 0.75 oh. okay so let's think about ratio or let's redraw let's conmari the branch CD because it's too complicated this one is 1.5 ohm this is C. Now, if I'm teaching in the whiteboard, I would have rubbed off the whole thing, lah. But then it's not possible now, cause oh well. Anyway, um, ding 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 ding. This one is D. So this is zero point seven five ohm. In other words, right, the potential difference will be shared with a ratio of two is to one. Correct. Meaning here to here will be two volt. And here to here will be 1 volt After I conmari all the resistor la. So if this is 3 volt And this whole thing from C to N is 1 volt 3 volt minus 1 volt will become 2 volt So this one is 2 volt lo. And 2 volt minus wait, wait, 3 volt minus 1 What am I talking about? Sorry This is 2 volt It's late guys It's late I think I know why wrong. The arrow is not perfect, that's why. We need a perfect arrow, guys. We need a perfect arrow. Why am I ASMRing the circuit? If you want an ASMR video, okay, never mind. JK, JK. Alright, so this one, uh, what was it again? 2 volts. That's it, that's it. So 3 minus 2 makes this 1 volt. Okay, and 1 minus 1, because here to here is 1 volt. So this one will go back to zero. I tend to do this just to double check la, because you know my math's not so good. So to find the reading on the voltmeter, one side of the voltmeter is 1.5 volt, the other side of the voltmeter is 1 volt. So it will be 1.5 minus 1. 0 0.5. Uh, 5 out of 5. I recommend this question. Very good, very nice. Okay. So let's look at this one. A 20 volt power supply. It's connected to a circuit consisting of 5 resistor. There's a potential drop of 7 volt and 4 volt across L and N. What are the potential drops across M, P and Q? Okay. There's a 20 volt rise across the resistor. So, mm, here to here is 20. It's like Matt's puzzle. I refuse to give you an equation, guys. You are, you are smart. You can do one. No need equation. Okay, here to here is 20. 20 drop by 7 means this point is 13 volt. Can? Can, can? Okay, can, can. Now, 13 drop by 4 means this point here is 9 volt. So far, so good. Okay, so you know here is 20. This line is 20. You know this line is 0. 
If 20 minus 30 minus 7 is 13, 13 minus 13 will be 0. So here to here would be a 13 volt drop, negative 13. So wrong and wrong. Okay. So now this one is 9 volt, and you know this line is 20 volt. So 20 minus what give you 9? 11, no? Because we all pass primary school. Sometimes I don't, lah, but. You've got answer already, but let's double check. You know everything on this line is 0 volt. So 9 minus what will give you 0? Minus 9 volt, no? Yay, the answer is C. So easy. Very nice. I like this question. Looks hard, but easy. Hmm. Okay, la. I give you a 2 out of 5 in difficulty. But 5 out of 5 in recommend students try. Maybe like every question is 5 out of 5, I miss. Hiyo. Okay, so this one. Okay, this one a bit trickier. La. So here it is a box with 4 terminals as usual. With a battery of E and negligible internal resistance is connected across PS. Okay. I quite like this kind of question because uh, it's a bit like the real world. Uh. When you go and do proper, it's like you have a circuit board where you can connect stuff. So this is actually closer to the real world. Not the crocodile clam nonsense. I mean, sorry, the crocodile clam. Mm, we will connect EMF E with no internal resistance. This was E. A high resistance voltmeter is connected across QR. Okay. So we're going to put a voltmeter here. And this voltmeter has a reading of E over 2. Which diagram shows the correct arrangement of the resistor inside the box? And you might be thinking, Misa. If we connect a voltmeter across QR, then we can connect another resistor across QR. Can. Two connections can share one input. Okay, so if it makes you feel happier, I draw the voltmeter out a bit low. You can connect voltmeter this way one. Lah. If you got KHB, KHB, uh, all the students that watch these videos are from IG. If you did your life skills before, you will notice that all the electrical component has a two-prong thing. Okay, so you can share the same position. Anyway, this will be the voltmeter and the voltmeter reading is E over 2. Okay, so let's try one by one. How the first one look like this. Uh. This one like this. This one like this. And this one is here. Hmm. So, you can see that just check the current flow lah, okay? So I'm going to the current will flow this way, this way. It will never enter the voltmeter because ideal voltmeter has infinite resistance. Okay, so it will go this way and then return back to zero. So if you look at this particular connection, right? These two resistors are in series, and if they are identical, which they are, there, the voltmeter is only measuring the potential difference across one of the two. So indeed, this one is E over two. This is correct. Okay, because it's one out of the two resistor. But uh, if you're paranoid and have trust issues like me, I check everything one. And then I think about how to modify the question. You think together with me lah. Okay? Well, I draw the circuit because... Uh, da, 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 da. Wow, this one like this ah. Hey, sure, sure. Why not? Why not? PS is also now called... So I'll connect the battery this way then, easy to see. It's the same thing, okay? So now, when we connect this... Uh, Alright, then you gotta ask yourself, where will the current flow? Come out from battery, all the current will go this way. Miss! Nobody go to this resistor across PQ. Ah. The answer is no. Because if any ngong ngong current go inside this resistor, oh, this ngong ngong current will also pass to the voltmeter. And the voltmeter has infinite resistance. No one can survive. Infinity. Maybe bus like here. But not current. 
So Karen won't even entertain the idea of going through this bigger branch here. Won't even entertain going through this branch here because of the vote meter. So only Karen will only go through this one. So in this case, uh, the vote meter reading is the terminal voltage because the vote meter is connected across the terminal. Check the terminal of the vote meter. Terminal of vote, me terminal of vote meter is here which is the same as the terminal of voltmeter is here and any resistor connected in series with voltmeter is irrelevant okay all right so then this uh, voltmeter reading would be equal to e terminal voltage okay okay let's continue continue Okay, what happens when we connect this one here? One like this. This is C. Okay. So if you connect this way, <laughs> the voltmeter is connected across an empty wire. One thing. Okay. And the second thing is um the current is already flowing. So it is not measuring the terminal voltage directly because it's not if I how should I put it? Uh, if I connect this way, no current will flow. Then this one will be equal to E. Because it is connected directly to the terminal. But now there's a connection here. Meaning current will flow this way. Uh, like that, like that. Okay, but because there's nothing on this wire, meaning there's no energy converted from electrical to non-electrical, so this one will be zero. Voltmeter is zero. Okay, last one. Hmm. This one means that the resistor and then like this and like this and like this. So weird one. I confirm cannot law. I don't know what this is measuring. Uh, because the current will flow this way and that's it. And the voltmeter is not even connected. So this voltmeter reading is zero. Okay lah. You go and think lah how I, sh how I can modify the question. I recommend. So this one would be maybe also a three out of five. Kinda. Sorta. Alright. Let's go on. Maybe a four out of five. I quite like that question. Okay, so there is a current um, P to R in a network of resistor. Sure. Potential difference between P and Q is 3 volt, and then this is 6, blah, blah, label already. Which one in the table is correct? Okay, law. So if this is 3, this is 6, mean the whole thing is 9. Meaning this will be 5 and this will be 4. So between SR, it has to be 4. Wrong, wrong. Okay, so this is 9 volt. 9 minus 3 is 6. So this point here is 6 volt. If this whole line is 9 volt, then 9 minus 5 is 4 volt. So if you want the potential difference between Q and S, it will be 6 minus 4, which is 2. So the answer is A. Mm, very easy. 1 out of 5 in difficulty. I'm not setting your objective, so you don't have to worry. Trials lah. Oh, this one. Hi, Cho. Okay, I tell you what. I go into a good lord. What is this? Okay. Hmm. I have selected many complicated ones I have seen. Okay, now mine. I shall start from the bottom then, since I scroll here already. So, in the circuit below, the emitter reading is zero. Sure. So, no current is flowing through here. Wonderful. What is the resistance of the resistor R? Hmm. So when <laughs> when this came out in my students, right, they all like panic ah, sebab because they don't know where's the direction of the current. And they are like, miss this branch how ah? Let's say the current flow like this oh. Uh go here meh. Then I'm like, um if the current go here, how can the current come back? You understand where I'm coming from? You might be thinking that um, 
the current can go like this, like this, like this, like this, like this. How to go back? You could play maze before or not? You cannot go up this 100 ohm because once you reach this 100 ohm, you know, like Pac Man, the current is flowing in to the left. You have nowhere else to go. You might say, can go here, I cannot, emitter is zero. So, what I'm trying to say is, if the emitter reading is zero, it also means here got no current. Ah. So, it's actually two separate circuits. Okay. Anyway, for here to have no current to flow, the potential difference have to be the same. Remember, the idea here is that the potential difference have to be the same. So, it means that, let's say this is point A and this is point B, VA must be equal to VB. <laughs> so, let's consider the ratio. I'm just going to do ratio without showing working. At this point in time, you can one. This ratio is 50 to 100, which is the ratio here is 1 ratio 2. Why I write that? I don't mind. The ratio here is 1 to 2. If the ratio here is 1 to 2, the ratio here is 1, the ratio here is 2. Ratio. Okay? So, this means that the potential will also be 1 to 2. So, a 1 to 2 ratio would be 4 to 8 volt. 4 volt plus 8 volt will give you 12 volt. Okay? Can I? Okay, so this is the positive terminal. So this is the higher potential. So everything up here is 12 volt. 12 minus 4 will give you 8 volt. So VA is 8 volt. Okay, 8 minus 8, then is it giving you back 0 volt? Then you return back to the negative terminal. Okay, so in this particular case, right, what is happening is um, there's no current flowing through AB. And the ratio of the potential difference will be evenly divided according to the ratio of the resistor. 50 to 100 is uh, ratioed at 1 to 2. Okay, so then the potential difference will be 4 to 8. 1 to 2 is 4 to 8. Double ma. And 4 to 8 is 12. Okay, so this point here would be 8 volt. Next, VB. So if you want this situation to happen when your emitter reading is zero, then this also will have to be 8 volt. Correct? Meaning to say, wow, the ratio is not 1 to 2, uh, guys, because now we are dividing 24 volt. Make sense? Okay, la, we can use ratio la, if you're more comfortable. So up here is 24 volt. Okay, 24 minus what will give you 8? The answer is 12. 12. No, wait. 16. Okay, so 24 minus 16 will give you 8. And then 8 minus 8 will finally give you your 0. You can return back to the negative terminal. Okay, so if this is 8, the one is 16, you can do ratio. Ah. I mean, it's up to you how you want to do it. The ratio here is 2 is to 1. Okay, la, I don't want to use equation. La. The ratio here is 2 to 1. Right? So if 200 is 1, then 2 would be 400. Lo. Then the answer is C. Okay? So not hard. Just the main idea where if there's no current flowing, then these two branches cannot have current flow. Meaning the potential at A must be equal to potential at B. Then you just use ratio. 1 to 2. So 4 volt, 8 volt, meaning here is 8 volt because 12 minus 4 is 8. Okay? Just like if this is 8 but up here is 24, then the ratio will flip to 2 is to 1. Because 24 minus 16 is 8 and 16 to 8 is 2 to 1. So if 1 is 200, then 2 is 400. Okay, very easy. I like this. 5 out of 5. We'll set again. Alright, this one. May, June 18. So you can see the recent questions. Some of them are actually quite tricky. Okay, 
So in this circuit, XY is a length L of a uniform resistance wire. A potential difference is applied across XY. R1 and R2 are unknown resistors. J is a sliding contact that joins the junction R1. Okay, fine. With a lamp, sure. So in place of a galvanometer, today we have a lamp. He. <laughs> okay, so... Um, Potential difference across R1 is V1, across R2 is V2, so this is V1, this is V2. What's the ratio of V1 to V2? So you move the jockey until this one is off, la, so there is no, no light. And this one is X, okay, sure, sure. Okay, there's no current here. Uh, this is J. I, uh, let's call this. Then you call XY. I call AB. Oh. And then the middle here, I call M. Oh. Okay. So if there's no current flowing, the potential difference across XJ will be equal to the potential difference across AM, which is V1. Lah. Okay. And the potential difference across JY will be equal to V2. Oh hey, so easy. So V1 over V2 will be potential difference of XJ over potential difference of JY. But also at the same time, right? V is equal to IR. R is equal to rho L over A. So V will be equal to I rho L over A. My ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, Rho and A and I are constant because this thing is in series. And no, it cannot pass through J because the light is off. So then what do we have? We have V is proportional to L. Okay, so what we need to do is just substitute the length of XJ on top, which is X, divided by the length of where is this? Uh? JY. JY would be L minus X. So the answer is D. Yay. Okay. All right. Dun, 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 dun. Okay. Next. Good lord, what is this, miss? What is this? I, uh, all in one la, they just put everything together and... Fine, oh, fine, I like this one. Okay, so you got a wire, like a potential meter, 100 cm, connected with cell L. Another cell M is connected in series with resistor 5, 10, 15, wonderful. Potential difference between PQ is balance, balance means ammeter reading is zero okay against 12.5 cm of the resistance ah yeah so the ammeter read zero damn it the potential difference across the other resistor is then balanced against the other lengths of the resistance wire so what they're trying to tell you is the potential difference from here to here is equal to here to here and the potential difference from here to here is equal to here to here. That way, no current will flow. So familiar. It's like Wheatstone Bridge. Correct, law. You are right. If you don't see it, then they try to help you. Anyway, which balance length of the resistance wire corresponds to the connection points given in the table? I do Easy peasy. Use logic, ah. 5 ohm is 12.5 cm. Okay? So, whatever the potential difference is, 5 ohm corresponds with 12.5 cm. Okay? So now, if your connection point is Q and R, 
and R Q and S and P and R Okay, so QR uh, is 10 ohm If 5 ohm is 12.5, 10 ohm will be 25 Ta-da! Okay Q and S is 25 Q and S ma 25 If 5 ohm is 12.5 25 ohm will be 12.5 times 5 Which is 62.5 Ta-da! P and R P and R is 15 ohm 5 ohm is 12.5 15 ohm will be 12.5 times 3 That would give you 37.5 Ta-da! So yay! This is the uh, uh, the Instagram thing where you oh bingo bingo circuit bingo, na na, that's his speed. Okay, not difficult. Remember what did I say? Ratio is my best friend. If you know how to solve it, multi-purpose ma. Alright, and finally we are at the last question meetings. I think so too. Okay, yep. So in this last question, wow, now 46 minutes now. You guys can speed up the video. But then at this point in time, I tell you the why why did I tell you so late? Anyway, hi yeah. So here you have a resistor S. Okay, these two is identical. IDK what resistor this is. Kirchhoff laws can be used with the data to deduce the resistance of each of the two identical resistors labeled R. They are trying to be helpful. I don't know whether it's helpful. But okay, law. So 4 ampere is here. The 3 ampere will go up, the 1 ampere will go down. Tan tan tan. And then you got 3 ampere here. 0 0.5 going down, meaning 2.5 is left behind. Tan tan tan. And 1 ampere, marry 0 0.5 ampere will be 1.5 ampere. Dun dun. So what is the resistance of the resistor R? You can use Kirchhoff's second law. Choose the loop. I will choose a loop with the least unknown. So that I don't have simultaneous equation. Why would I want a simultaneous equation? Life is hard guys. Life is hard as it is. So I could use this loop. I'm just gonna call this loop one. Loop one. So sum of EMF is sum of IR. This is a Kirchhoff second law question. I just choose the question because it's nice. Alright, so where were we? Sum of EMF is zero. The current okay, you need to first choose the direction in which you want the loop, okay? So I'm going to loop clockwise because just simply la, I like to loop clockwise. So when you loop clockwise, you will notice that the 3 ampere you will be thinking, okay, I loop clockwise. 3 multiplied by Oh no, miss! You see here? We ain't got this resistance, miss! Oh no, so I mean, you can continue this road, but then you will notice that without this resistance, your equation will have two unknown. No, actually, your equation will have three unknown. You don't have this resistance, you also don't have S. So you're like, dang it. How do I choose a loop? True story, you know. I'm just playing things out as it would look like in the real exam for you. So you don't get the idea where just because I can solve it very quickly that you should be able to solve unless you practice a lot of Kung Fu like me. Okay, so actually the loop that we all should be using is this one, my friends. This one. Because uh, all the components I pass through, okay, generally when you loop, all the components you pass through, you have to do a mental check. Do I know the resistance? Do I know the resistance? Do I know the resistance? Yes, this is R. Yes, this is R, which I'm trying to find. So there's only space for one unknown. There's this Chinese saying, oh, one mountain cannot hide two unknown. Wait, wait, what are you talking about? One mountain cannot hide two tiger. So, 
one equation if can please don't have two unknown not say cannot just harder alright so I'm gonna use the Kirchhoff second law here This is 12. I will loop anti clockwise because all the current is anti clockwise. Like this. So, for me, this one is 1 ampere, so 1 times R plus 1.5 times R plus. A current that comes out here because everybody com recombined or reunited already all the current has reunited back to 4 ampere so the internal resistance or the re current that passes through the battery is 4 ampere la. so you will take 4 multiply by 0 0.5 so what you have is 12 is equal to 2.5 r plus 2 10 is 2.5 r r will be equal to 4 ohm Okay, is there a way to find the resistance of the resistor S? Uh, 